right, so today we're going to be doing a wooden dummy drill that you can do at home if you've got a wooden dummy and you don't know what to do, then this is going to be the video for you. All I really want to do is... Okay, so the first technique we're going to do today is paksa. Really what you're doing is you're using the palm to deflect an incoming attack. It can be done sort of far away from the body here, where you're, you're turning and deflecting, or it can be done closer here. This sort of close idea is when you're getting in, and you're just using this to sort of cover, maybe covering the upper arm of the opponent. The other one, often because it's an attack coming to you, you're going to be using it maybe more on the, on the forearm or towards the elbow if you can get there. But if you imagine someone throwing like this, by the time you touch their elbow, that fist is potentially in your face. So at long range, it's more likely that you're gonna make contact around the forearm toward the elbow. And when you're close range, it's gonna be upper arm. Yeah, maybe elbow, but on the upper arm. All right, so let's have a look at how we use this on the dummy insults. pressure away from you so you're not in receipt of all of this force all the time but that little bit of rotation can help to just steer things away and maybe create an opportunity for you to go forward yourself on the dummy for this specific drill we're going to start off with our feet square and we're going to jump out or do a turning stance that's what that means turning stance moving away from you in a cross direction but it's, the elbow is basically moving toward that center your center and your arms extending a short distance you extend too much you make yourself vulnerable no technique should be done here it's only when you're attacking that you should fully extend your arm otherwise it should always have a nice bend in it that way it's getting support from the lower body from the hips so we keep the elbows low to borrow support from the body and we rotate. As you can see, this hand, my back hand, is high. Guard hand, Wu Sao. My Wu Sao, when I turn this direction, should be aimed at the core of the dummy. I should not be turning like this. My Wu Sao, if you're my opponent, should be aimed at you. Same on the dummy. Time. That's out. Tan. Pat. Tan. Pat. Tan. You turn when you do a tan cell. You change. It's this hip that supports this the most. This has got to drive the action. If you do an action like this, it's wrong. Or let's just say inefficient. This action has been done with your arm, with your shoulder, okay? And then your body joins in later. And it will add some weight to the technique, but the bulk of the work has already been done. We need to use the body as one. The idea is that you use your whole body against a limb. That has always been true in any of the martial arts I look at. It's always that general concept. You're using the, your whole body against the limb or you know, it, whole body in a strike, whatever. But you're not using limb against limb or limb against body, which means that now, maybe even more so than the pack, you really need that efficient movement of the body to a one, two, one, two, one, two. Remember to keep your guard hand high. It's easy just to concentrate on the hand in motion and forget about this and start doing some crappy guard hand like this. You do a crappy guard hand like this, you deserve to get hit. But we also have to start thinking about about the, the, the quantity 
quality of energy that we're putting into this thing, yeah? It shouldn't be something hard. It doesn't need to be anything like that. We're talking about a deflection, not block, okay? So how much pressure are you going to need to block to deflect if you're using your rotation? We should be paying attention to the amount of pressure that we apply to the dummy while we're moving. And that should then inform the amount of rotation we need. So if we think about the mechanics, the elbow moves a little bit. It moves a little bit because it runs into one of these obstacles on the way to the punching block of wood, right? Or to the striking block. Right? It runs into that really quickly. And we don't st still keep on pressing because that would be like me walking to a closed door, seeing it's closed and keep on walking. We sustain a certain amount of pressure or we use that to inform the need for a different action, which will come next. Or, that was number one, or use the other hip, raise your guard, keep your elbow as close to the middle as is comfortable for you. Conceptually, what we're looking at here is two pushing actions. Push, I call it push because your elbow is going away from your body. Push here, push here. And now we're looking at one receiving action where the elbow is moving back. So we've got push, push, pull. Push, push.
stripe of the same hand again. One of the reasons why I talk about using it with a bent arm and not an extended arm like this. Or you would simply throw the back hand into play. So it would be pass out the strike.